This week on HomeKit News, the Thorbolt Smart Fingerprint Doorknob with Thread. Welcome back everybody. Today we're looking at a lock from Thorbolt, with this model being the MK1, not Mark 1. This is a smart fingerprint doorknob with keypad, and it's important to note that whilst this is a smart lock for smart homes using Thread, it's only Apple Home compatible, so no matter over Thread in this case. Now whilst this is the only Apple Home compatible lock from Thorbolt so far, they do have a similar model which also includes a fingerprint reader. Now this is the MD1 which doesn't offer Apple Home support so it isn't smart as such, but in some ways works much the same as the MK1. There's also the base model that I have here, the M1, and this doesn't come with the fingerprint reader, just the keypad, so once again this is not a smart lock as such. So you can tell the difference between the MD1 and the MK1. You'll notice the MK1 has a square back plate, whilst the MD1 comes with a round back plate. So what's in the box, you ask? There's the lock itself, of course, which comes in three sections, which is the front handle, rear handle, and the latch lock. There are a pair of spare backup keys, should you need them. I don't think you will. There are some screws for the strike plate and the latch bolt, as well as a couple of spares. And there's also a strike plate and strike box. Finally, there's a manual, as well as a cutting guide for cutting a hole if you have a brand new door, as well as a quick function card. Let's now have a quick look at the features of this lock, so pause the video if required. So the MK1 can store up to 100 passcodes and 100 fingerprints, which is quite impressive. There's auto lock, which can be disabled, making it effectively also passage mode. The lock is supposedly splash proof, although there's no official IP rating, so take that as you will. It uses anti-peep technology, so you can add digits to the start and end of your passcode to disguise the real number, although with the fingerprint sensor you probably won't use the keypad too often. And aside from the backup keys, you can also apply emergency power to the lock via a USB-C port. Let's take a closer look now, and this is the black model, and you get the fingerprint reader directly on top of the outer handle, which is pretty convenient. The sensor also has an LED ring that changes colour depending on different circumstances. There's also an LED strip that does much the same in that it lets you know what mode the lock is working in, etc. by changing colour to green or red for the most part. Now some people have commented that this lock looks too big, but actually even though it's 80mm deep from the back plate, if you compare it to a typical dumb doorknob like here, it's only just over a centimetre deeper whilst also being home to the fingerprint sensor, so I think it's the right size for you to grip it comfortably. Onto the keypad, and once activated it's backlit so you can see the individual keys in the dark, which is very useful with key presses also emitting sounds. You also get the HomeKit code on the inner handle, which also contains the four AA batteries, with another HomeKit code on the battery compartment on the inside. I won't be installing this particular lock, as for this video I'll be using the Titanium model, but I will be giving both of these locks away as part of a giveaway competition, so stay to the end of the video to find out the details. Previously I mentioned the emergency USB-C port, so under this rubber cover you can see we have a keyhole for use in emergencies, but you can also see below that is a USB-C port. So to demonstrate I've got the lock here, and to show that there are no batteries inside, you can see the fingerprint reader and keypad are totally dead, so to speak. If I connect a power bank to the lock via the USB port, you can see the lock instantly comes to life with the keypad becoming active. So for the purposes of this test, this is the internal door I'll be installing the lock on. This lock here operates the deadbolt, so I'll be replacing this handle with the MK1. The lock is now fitted, and the installation took me less than five minutes, honestly, and I only really needed a screwdriver, so this is one of the easiest installs so far. Here's the inside handle, and if I just remove the cover you can see I've got the four AA batteries, as well as a second HomeKit code on the bottom, and a reset button on the top. 
So with the physical side of the installation done, it can still act as a dumb lock like so. And although the outside handle won't turn and engage the lap bolt, which is a standard, prior to the smart home setup, it initially allows you to use the fingerprint to unlock, which prevents you from inadvertently getting locked out before you've fully set it up. So I can tap my thumb on the sensor and it locks, even though I've not actually added any prints yet. The same also applies to the keypad with any code working just the same. The MK1 works with the Apple Home app, of course, and the Sleekpoint app, which is also used for Airverse and Holomark products. So I'll add it by pressing the plus icon. You can see the Thorbolt lock listed, so I first just need to prepare it for installation by pressing the reset button and begin the installation process just like any other HomeKit device which is scan the code and add it to your home. It couldn't be easier. Now, if you already have a smart lock that uses Apple's manage access feature, you'll have set up a main access code already. And as such, it'll appear here. If this is your first lock, you'll just set up one for the first time. Now that I've got it set up, it appears in both the Sleep Point and Apple Home apps. So if I hop over to Apple Home, you can see the tile for it. The settings only offer the basics as is standard for HomeKit, but you see the battery levels and more importantly, the manage access feature. This allows you to use the same code for all locks with this feature, as well as grant user access on a lock by lock basis. Now, as you can see, I have the U200 and the U50 set up, although my A100 isn't listed as it isn't compatible with manage access. I'll jump to the Eve app now. And if I go into the settings panel and thread network, you can see the MK1 listed at the top and using thread. Adding a fingerprint does require the Sleek Point app, but you'll be glad to know registering an account is not required. So tap on Manage Access, then the plus icon, then simply add a name for the user. After that, you can add a tag if you like, like family, work, guest, etc. But it's not actually required either. From there, just choose the type of access required. So I'll select Unlimited. After that, you do need to add a passcode that's associated with the fingerprint in the rare occasion when, for whatever reason, your fingerprint doesn't work. So it's sort of a backup. After the code is added, I just need to start adding a print with the print needing its own description. In index finger, left thumb, etc. Once I've named my digit, as it were, I can then proceed to adding my fingerprint or my thumbprint. You simply follow the instructions and start adding the print over the course of six successful presses. It only takes a few seconds ultimately, and it's very easy to set up. Now that's in the bag, I can go for a quick test and no surprise, it worked great. There are a few options available in the Sleek Point app that are quite useful, which includes the auto lock option. Now this is on by default, but it can be turned off, effectively setting the lock to passage mode. If you do want auto lock, you can also set the delay to locking it by up to three minutes or as low as five seconds. There's also an option called lockdown mode. Now this locks down the keypad when multiple failed attempts at adding a code have occurred. This option allows you to set how many attempts are allowed within both a 10 minute period and a one hour period. The anti peep option is turned off by default, so it's up to you as to whether you think you'll need it. Other than that, the app does offer usage logs, but it's fairly simple and usually quite straightforward to use. So as this uses thread, whilst it's definitely more consistently faster than Bluetooth, there will be times when it takes a moment to wake up. The speed is more than adequate via Apple Home, I think you'll agree. So I'll just demonstrate it here. Finally, to the pros and cons, starting with thread and devices with this protocol are very welcome in my home. So to have it on a door lock is one of the best use cases, in my opinion. The fingerprint sensor is really well located, making the process of using your thumb followed by a quick turn of the wrist really quite natural. Even though there's no home key, I honestly don't think you'll be bothered when you use the sensor. As the latch bolt doesn't move, unlike a deadbolt, this lock is ridiculously quiet by comparison. And with the option to turn off the beeps, it becomes the quietest lock by far. 
Smart latch locks are pretty uncommon, so at present this is in a field of its own, at least until a Cara's U300 arrives, although it's unlikely to be anywhere near as budget friendly as the MK1. It's great that the lock uses Apple's Manage Access feature, so if you solely want to use Apple Home, you can do so. Now this doesn't use matter over thread, so this does limit its reach to other non-Apple Home users, but for those of us that use Apple Home exclusively, this isn't an issue of course. All in all, for use in the home, especially for internal doors or for specific rooms in an Airbnb property that you want to keep off limit to guests, this is a cheap and effective solution. I've tried to cover as much as I can, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. And if you fancy winning one of these locks, please add a comment as to where you'll use the lock and where you live. I'll pick a winner at random in the coming weeks and notify the winners directly. In the meantime, do like, share and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll leave you with this quote from the great WC Fields who said, I always cook with wine. Sometimes I even add it to food. Mm -hmm.